and we are back with another late late night painting video not going to go too long um just a late late night video did couldn't sleep so uh, i wanted to get myself back in the saddle we're really doing a model review first and then uh if i feel like i'm still in good shape i may interesting uh i may also do some painting um I'm not entirely sure at the moment, uh, but we're going to start off with doing some reviews. So the first thing I wanted to review was the Crisis Protocol miniature game. Uh, so for you folks that are doing board gaming, uh, I have this. Uh, I'm also going to review how painting is going on some commissions I'm working on. Uh, and hopefully we might get into painting some Sabretooth today for my Marvel Crisis Protocol fans. But first and foremost, I want to do do another model review of a kit um and do it live with you we'll do a build of it so we'll get this built but cable and domino the last one we did of course was deadpool uh and agent bob from hydra with the chimichanga truck so i thought to myself uh after we looked at some of the cards in that box and how they play uh, i wanted to make sure i had cable and domino as options uh because i know that a lot of this stuff that they do kind of it jives so we're gonna see how it how this goes in this book uh or in th this book uh in this kit and uh here, we'll check a look so you guys can see a little bit you can see a little bit of what the kits look like sorry that my camera is not choosing to focus all right let's see if my close-up cam all right there we go Close-up cam is definitely working better. All right, awesome. So Cable, the son of X-Men leader Cyclops, was sent to the future to save his life. He was infected by the deadly techno-organism virus raised by Clan Askeani. Uh, uh, Ask, Ask, uh, Cable was able to use his own incredible mutant powers to keep the virus in check, though he, the, though the constant... Uh, strain limits him from reaching his true potential granted incredible telepathic and telekinetic telekinetic powers from his mutation cable is also equipped with an advanced weaponry and technology from the 38th century which is true uh, having traveled back in time cable now seeks to change the apocalyptic future from which he grew up and ensure a better world for all that's very simplified for Cable's story because that is not entirely how the comic book happens. Um, Neil uh, Truman, aka Domino, was the product of an uh, elected government pro uh, elected government program whose goal was to create the ultimate mutant weapon. Unwilling to be a pawn of anyone, Domino escaped uh, with the help of her powers and set out to find her own path in the world with her abilities to manipulate probability fields ensuring things always go her way. Uh, and her extensive training in armed and unarmed combat, Domino became one of the most dangerous mercenaries in the world. Not long after, Domino found a new home and purpose as a hero, as a mainstay member of X-Force. And of course, she very much is part of X-Force. Um, as Deadpool would say, your, your uh, what is it uh, for the movie? Your powers are not very cinematic. Because, um, of course, she's had to deal with Deadpool for a lot longer than many have. Um, as part of X-Force. Which, of course, Cable was also part of X-Force. Because, of course, in the second Deadpool movie, that is very much why they get to the point of where they get to. Um, which I, I love, love, love uh, Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2 was amazing. Deadpool 1 was amazing. They were all amazing. But. I think we're going to stick with the close-up cam. Because. I'm noticing when I do my unboxings. My wide-angle cam. Does not seem to. Uh, stay around the way that it should. So as always. Here are our sprues. And we notice a big base. And small base. Because I think. Cable is on a big base. And Domino is on a small base. Uh, 
So they have a few things in their box that uh, Deadpool did not have in his. Which is slightly interesting. Take a look. Yes, so they, they do in fact. Alright, first we're going to review the cards, then we'll review the other stuff. So they have a couple of different things that are in there. So this is the first one, which is an affiliate card. So you have X-Force and on the other side, X-Force. So literally just X-Force and you can see here, Cable, Colossus, Deadpool, Domino, Sabretooth, Wolverine. So technically they have all been parts of X-Force. I know you might not think Sabretooth would fit the bill for that, but he was actually part of X-Force. He was a hero, a hero at one point, kind of. Um, and then we have a scenario here, which is Sword establishes base on Moon's blue area. Um, place three console target uh, of opportunity as shown on map C. So that's from the main box. You have a map that helps you lay out different things on the board. Um, and you have to place, what is it? It's place three console tokens, which could be these. I don't think they are though. Uh, the player controlling the most console scores three VPs during the cleanup phase. So that's a way to score so the cool part about this game and i say it all the time is that you actually have scenarios um usually pick two different scenarios so there are different ways to score in one game uh, and you can see interact with a console if no enemy character are con um contesting the console you are now controlling the console if one or more enemy character contesting the console rolls a die if the result is a um hit a wild or a, a critical hit a wild or a regular hit um you are now controlling wait if one or more enemy characters contesting the console roll a die if a player controls more consoles during the power phase than the opponent they control the security system in the base and may choose an enemy character the chosen character is pushed small oh, okay got it so if you control the actual consoles you can use the base to actually move and throw somebody somewhere which could be very cool tactically oh that's kind of cool that's that's a cool little scenario so this is a scenario you can add to your scenario deck for you guys to pick scenarios um, and you'll see in here, the scenario will have a threat level 14. And I always talk to you guys about how when you make a force, you have to build your, your, you have to build your force based on the threat level. So when we go over the cards, that will, um, the cards of the characters, I can point that out. But that means you would get to add up to 14 threat level. So, you know, to give you an example, Cable is a five threat level. So... As I say to people, one of the reasons I love this game is that although I am a huge Marvel fan and I'm just buying a ton of these models because I want them, just to have them in addition to um, playing the game, um, and I also love having lots of options, you really only need three or four, like, you just need to get a squad of probably about three or four characters. I you can keep playing that in all these different scenarios, which is very cool. So it's a very cost-effective game. Um, because you figure if you and a friend get the starter box, which is $100, um, and split that, um, and then maybe you go out and buy a character or two each, um, probably for less than 100 bucks, you'll have a pretty decent amount and a range of models already without even doing anything, and you already have some terrain, you already have some stuff to start off playing, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we have, in addition to the affiliation card... Which you don't really need that, but those affiliation cards are helpful because it tells you who can who is supposed to team up. We then have the other cards which you can pick up. I always forget what these cards are called, um, but you get to choose a few of them on your force at the beginning of the game. And then you'll see here X Force. So this is with an affiliation. Cat and Mouse. After all characters have been deployed, an X Force character may play this card. Place this character within two of 
its current position. This character cannot make more than one move during move action during its next activation. So that's kind of cool where it is saying you can't do a double move action, but it's nice because they've already deployed and then you can move closer to something. So it gives you a little tactical advantage. Interesting. It has to be an X-Force. So you have to have... Uh, what that means is you would have to have everyone on your team be X-Force so you'd have an affiliated team. X-Force, and you'll see this was reactive and this is active. Reactive just means that, as it said, you're doing it and you're reacting to something finishing. Um, active means uh, you're going to use it to act and do something. Uh, an allied X-Force character may spend three power to play this card. Make the enemy character with, with the highest threat level with a target token if the marked character is dazed or KO'd this round by an allied X-Force character all allied X-Force characters gain two power oh, that's really cool if there is a tie for the highest threat value choose one of the tied characters to receive the target token yeah so you basically are targeting a character and then if you're able to knock them out everybody can get more power that's pretty cool and again that's an x-force so you have to be affiliated this is unaffiliated so if your team is a mix of characters and they're not all x-force you can pick this card up if you want and it is after attack the damage and ally character is resolved the damage character may spend one power to play this card this character may advance a small towards the attacking character so if you have a long range character you take a shot then go in close to maybe set up uh, so you could shoot, move, and then hit them if your attack lets you. So it could be a tactical way to actually get two attacks in one turn, which is pretty cool. And then we have uh, rec Recalibration Matrix, unaffiliated, reactive. When an ally character is attacking or defending before the calculate, uh, calculate success or failure step, at the end of the modified dice step of the attack, it may spend three power to play this card. Uh, the attacking and defending character reroll all of their attacks, attack and defense die. So if you're in a spot where you're actually in trouble, um, you, it gives you a reroll, essentially, which is kind of nice for an attack. So those are the cards we got. Um, I'm not going to really go over this, but I'm going to, you know, we have the. I think there's the targeted tokens here. Um, and then you have... Oh, no, that's the target token. These are the consoles for the scenario. And then these are just... They help you with knowing that you're X-Force affiliated. So people know what characters are... Uh, which characters are on your team. It's a visual way to say they're part of X-Force. Um, and then our cards. So we can take a look at what Cable's all about. So he's got six health. He's a five threat level. Uh, he's a size two. He can move a small template, which is cool. Pulse rifle. Uh, it's a five range. Ooh. You roll five dice and it's zero. After this attack is resolved, the character, uh, this character gains uh, power equal to the damage it dealt, which is awesome. If you roll a wild, incinerate. After the attack is resolved, the target character gains the incinerate special condition. Ooh. So that's going to hurt him over time, which is good. Um, then we have A2. 7, and it's 6 power. For each attack that deals damage after this attack is resolved, remove 1 power from that character. Ooh. So that's pretty cool. You actually can take power off and damage them, which is very helpful in Marvel Christ Protocol. So A2... Uh, what that means when you get... Uh, what does that mean in range? I'm actually forgetting that now. If it's A2... Uh, what does that mean? I forgot. I think you have to be... I think it's from an allied character. Uh, Wetworks Affiliation X-Force. Each allied character may roll one die in their attack roll uh, once per turn. So that's if you're affiliated as X-Force, which means your whole team has to be affiliated. And he just has a natural power as a leader. So that's his leader power for the team. Um, 
body slide by one to power this is place this character within two of his of its current position this superpower can only be used once per turn so that's pretty cool because that means he can do that to move up which is a cool little thing and then he would be able to actually use um uh, still be able to move and still be able to do other stuff. Omega threat level powers X. This character may spend one to four power when playing, uh, paying the cost of the superpower. Choose an interactive terrain feature with distance three with a size equal to or less than the power spent. To use this power, throw the chosen terrain feature. A medium movement. This okay, so he could chuck terrain at people. That's pretty awesome. Um, telekinetic shield, two power. When this character or an allied character is within three of this character is targeted by an attack, the attack may uh, they use the superpower. Add two dice to that target's character's defense roll against his attack. So he basically gives you additional attack uh, defense. That's awesome. During the power phase, uh, this character gains one additional power. So he just has an, uh, he and he's immune to poison. Uh, when we flip him over, not much is different, except now this is going to do on a wild or a regular stagger. After each attack is resolved, the target character gains the staggered special condition. Yeah, so that's all the same. The wet works the same. So nothing really changes except that on the other side of the card. We're going to go through Domino real, real fast. Um, so Domino, her threat level is only a three. She moves a medium instead of a small, so she's faster than Cable is, which makes sense. Um, height's the same. She's He's got more telepathy attack than she does. Um, she's got attack. The, uh, after this attack is resolved, this character gains one power. Rapid fire. That's if she rolls a critical hit. After this attack is resolved, this character may make one additional automatic pistol attack. The additional attack must target the original character. Uh, the additional attack does not have rapid fire special rules. So she literally, if she rolls criticals, can do it again. So she can get a double attack on a turn, which is insane, and that's free. Um, she's rolling four dice on that, and she's shooting from a range of three. Um, grenade bounce, that's one power. It's four uh, attack dice, and it's a range of four. The attack ignores line of sight, so she doesn't worry about seeing you. Um, the defending character does not benefit from cover, so there's no cover defense, which adds an additional defense die to your roll. Uh, incinerate after this. Okay, so this case, she got the same thing. Explosive, she rolls a while before. Damage dealt, the enemy character with in two of the target character suffers one damage. So, nice. Um, lucky shot. The target attack does not gain power for damage dealt by this attack. Right, because traditionally you would gain power for damage. Damage. Which is the mechanic of the game for the, you to be able to fight back and hurt the person. Uh, stun. After this attack is resolved, the target character gains stun special condition. So, you are wild, they get stunned. Probability manipulation. That's another one that is a variable power cost. Um, after this character rolls attack, defense, or dodge dice, but before resolving critical, uh, resolve critical step. Uh, it may spend any amount of power to use this power. For each power spent, choose one. Okay. Choose one skull to treat as a critical success or as a hit. Okay, hold on. For each power spent, choose one.
after this character rolls attack, defense, or dodge. I don't really understand how this works. So she could turn skulls into hits. But why would you want to do that in a defense roll? Because in a defense roll, you want shields. You don't want... Oh, no, or criticals. That's right. Because criticals help. No, no, that makes sense. When this character is attacking or defending, enemy characters do not roll additional dice for... Oh, got it. So she can shut off the critical. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so none of that is different. In fact, I don't think any of her powers are any different. She is the same on both sides of her card. Yeah, she doesn't get any additional powers when she goes to the other side. So that's pretty cool. Domino's interesting. She's not... She does seem a little less flashy than Cable does. And I don't know if they did that on purpose, but it's kind of weird. But I... Because... I would potentially think it would be the opposite, that she would be the more powerful of the two. Um, because of the fact that she is controlling probability. But I could be wrong about that. I, I, I was under the impression she might have been the more OP character. But uh, as always, I'm going to put the build instructions like right here. So I can look at them. We're going to look at the sprues together. And let's see. Am I, is my assumption right? Yeah, so they don't tell you. Let's look at the box. Yes, 100% is right. So Cable is the one that's going to be on the bigger base. So the first thing we will look at is the bases. So as always, we got our four regular bases. And we have our debris that they gave us. You can see they do the same thing with the larger bases. But again, they give you two of them. So I love this because these are great to use in other games. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm probably gonna do this one. Just cause he's like hunkering down and like using his shield. So I think we're gonna go with the dip battle damaged one. Cause I just like that a little bit better. Personally, that's me. So I'm gonna do that one. And then this base will come off. And then what does the domino model look like? I just forgot. Oh, she's got explosions happening too. So maybe we'll use this one for her. So I'll use that one just because it does have a ledge, but it has a little bit of like damage on the sidewalk. And then as always, these extra ones will go at me for saving for next time. All right, no parts fell off the sprues this time. Because the last box I opened, we had some missing, we had some parts laying on there. But there's cable. That's his sprue. And then here is Domino's sprue. I'm going to try a little experiment. I said it on the last video when we did Deadpool. But I know I have an assembly guide. But I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I don't have to look at the instructions. I know that's going to be like a little bit of a fun little project, but I'm going to see if I don't. I'm going to try not to look at them at least. Because I say it all the time when we build these Marvel Crisis Protocol models that I feel that the model, the sculptors over at Atomic Mass Games. Oh, and I totally didn't do justice to this video. But uh, I want to say a big shout out to my sponsor for this video, which is Undiscovered Realms. Uh, you guys that are watching, if you want to take a look and give them a shout out or look look see as it as it were, um, they are pretty awesome guys. Uh, not pretty awesome. They are awesome guys, uh, and they do everything from collectible card games like Magic: The Gathering. 
Um, they do the, if you are a big Dragon Ball super fan, they got that. They got Pokemon. Um, they have a ton of stuff. They have Funko Pops. Um, they have, of course, Tabletop Gaming, which is where I get all of my uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff from. Uh, it's where I get all of my Warhammer, whether it's 40K models or the new Age of Sigmar stuff. Okay, ooh. Oh, I'm having one of my bad times. Okay, so, fun fact about this. Oh, I see how we're, I see what we're going to do. All right, so you got to pop, yeah. That's going to be a pain in the buttock. No pun intended. Yeah, so you have to uh, get, I have to get that lined up properly, but because with these, that's right, because it's going to, I know exactly what they're, where they're going with it. You're going to put the other side, the other packs on the other side. Um, all right, so I lied. I can't do this one without the instructions. <laughs> um, he's got a lot of little detail pieces, which I didn't notice that until now. He has no alternative build pieces, so it is, it is in fact just a single build. And I'm sorry that I didn't do all the videos I promised you guys today. I, I had every intention. Oh, geez, I'm putting this on upside down. Um, I had every intention of doing all of them, um, but then I very weirdly pulled a muscle in my uh, arm. Yeah, so I oddly pulled a muscle. All right, interesting. Okay, sorry guys, just bear with me. So I'm usually praising the model the model designs on these guys, but they kind of messed up the model. They didn't put a divot. Hold on, let's look at something. Oh, they mislabeled the sheet. Wait a minute. Okay, so what I'm, the conundrum I find myself in. Is that there is no. There is no square dub. So there's supposed to be a square dub that this sits on. And they didn't. They made it just solid. Which would make me think it's supposed to go there. But when I looked at the instructions, the the one that says 12... That's really weird. Okay. The one that says 12 is supposed to go around his leg. But I thought 13 is supposed to go around his leg. No, 13 goes up on top. Okay, like I said, he's got a lot of little bits. So this is like... A little annoying, actually. All right, so five. But yeah, so apparently he's... They, they didn't actually put an indent in there, which I could very easily fix. I'm going to see how much of a problem it ends up being. But yeah, there's like... There's no divot, or what I could do is I could just cut the divot off. And I'll just do that. Yeah, so if you guys look... There, there is, there is no indent. So what I'm gonna do. I'm 
I'm going to shave that off. So now it should okay so we want it to sit like that yeah see now it doesn't sit right sorry I know it's focusing on the stuff behind me it sits a little bit better but it still doesn't sit right now if I just messed this model up, I possibly might have done that, but I don't think I did because it because it definitely says that 12 is supposed to be Yeah, Cable is a tough one because Cable's got a lot of guns. Like, a lot of guns. He doesn't just have a few guns. He has a lot of guns. Um, let me get the big body parts in first, and then we can go on to the other stuff. Yeah, I, th I, I thought Cable might be an easy build, Domino Cable, but I realized they have a lot of equipment because they're mercenaries, so they have, like, a lot of satchels. They have a lot of like. I'm just going to give that all time to set because I have a tendency to go a little too fast when I'm doing these builds. And then all of a sudden, I'm starting to push pieces together and they're not coming up. So I'm just going to leave that there for a minute and I'm going to cut out my. All right, so 12 is the one. Now 12, let me cut out 13 first, because 13 is supposed to go on another spot that I didn't glue yet. So, so 13 is supposed to go up there. I love this model company, but they're big into the smooth concept. Okay. They like to give you like smooth grooves, but they'll make everything else on a smooth. All right. I think we did right. It's so confusing. There's so much going on in this model. Exactly. I didn't want to push on that. This is what I mean by I will start pushing on it, and they'll be like, I'll start moving tons of pieces out of the way. All right. And then I need to do... I'm going to keep trying to go. I'm trying to be, like, very gentle with how I, I, I stick on pieces to this. Well... Okay. All right, there we go. So we're getting there. Oof. This cable model is tough. This is... All right, so now 12, they want me to put 12. I'll wait until you see some of the stuff we got to do on this model. We got to even put bullets. We have to put ricocheting bullets on this thing. So I love this. You'll see that they put these little X's. That little X is so you know that you have to put. So 
So you know that you have to put that piece on there. And I think we're going to have some other things that we're going to put on there. If I had to think, because I don't remember him. He just, I don't remember him just having, I, I thought it was around the whole leg. He had satchels. Ah, whole leg just came off of my hand. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to, ah. Now, now I'm having problems. <sighs> wow. Sorry. This is hard. <sighs> the leg just wants. Ah. Why does the leg want to keep coming off? I don't understand why it wants to keep coming off. Ah, god damn it. Why does this leg want to just always come off? Yeah, so I don't know. I To me... Doesn't look wrong, but I'm just holding that leg in place for a minute. All right, we're gonna let it just set for a minute because the model wants to be a little temperamental. It's not that I think the satchel's wrong. I just don't remember him only. I thought he had it wrapped around his whole body. I thought it was wrapped around the whole leg. I don't remember. I don't remember. So we got the cape piece. Which is the next step. And then we have my man's head. So again, for this model, unlike the other models that we've opened up, um, we don't have any alternative builds. So you know, the last time we had some alternative builds, um, with the Deadpool figure that we did. Now, what's interesting about this model... is you have to put the cape on before the head. Which is pretty cool, actually. So you actually have to put that cape on because then the head sits in the cape. Let's just put a little bit of glue on the cape and just a little bit more glue in there. So I will say, uh, yeah, all right. So with this model in particular, You're gonna have to let it set. You can't really glue this all at once because it will it, it will start to come apart on you. Because the way they've laid out this model, I really love the detail that they've created, but the way that they've laid it out, you have so much of like so many bits that you're putting on it that um it uh it, it will start to you're gonna push on stuff you're gonna you know so that's why i mean like so this shows just kind of a different solution in model building um i love the company don't get me wrong and i always praise them but this is where you can sort of see the difference between 
like a GW model versus like a Games Workshop model versus some of these indie companies because this is the kind of stuff like GW does still I mean they're not you still do have to like put on detail so I don't want to make it like uh Uh, it's because I put too much glue. Ah, uh, you guys are probably getting annoyed at me because I'm not focusing the camera right. I'm trying not to touch, like. Yeah. Ah, because the top of my. Sorry guys, I'm having trouble with this model and as I do very often, I put too much glue on one part of it and I'm trying to get his head positioned right, especially with this model because he's going to be putting up a force field and we need to have the head positioned correctly um yeah this this uh this thing came off i'm gonna keep it off until the end i'm gonna let this set for a minute um but yeah that's it, it, it i say good things about this model company because it's true um but that's one of the things where you could sort of see that the difference is that you're putting a lot of these little details on whereas what gw tries to do so when they I've complained about them for the same thing I'm about to praise them for, but one of the things that they do is they, um, they will build a figure with that, like, crazy, and I talked about seaming, so part of it is, is to do with seaming, so what do I mean by seaming? So they'll, you know, you'll be building a GW model, and you'll be like, oh, like, that's weird this is like part of this guy's head or leg or whatever and like it doesn't make sense but when you get it all together you, you have a whole person well part of why they do that too is so that they can put these little details on different places so that you're not having to put all these little details on yourself um oh okay so I actually didn't have to put the cape on. So I lied. There is a customized feature here. It's cape or no cape. Um, so you could have no cape. And then in that case, you would put the gun behind him. Rather than having the cape. I know cable to have the cape. So I should have brought that up. But yeah, you can see here. You can do the cape option or no cape option. It's just confusing when you look at the actual um, instructions because they make one step four and one step five instead of just making them both step. Uh, instead of making them both the same step and just say optional. Um, but then we have to do this. So this is where we're going to get a little bit more crazy. But we actually are almost done building cable. That was not that bad. Um, but I did need the instructions because it was a little, little complicated. But I love this piece. I love him building his, uh, his like force field. That is very cool. 
And I might use the gun on the floor, to be quite honest with you. But now this is going to be kind of crazy. We have to actually stick these bullets on there. So we'll see how that goes. But the good news is that you can see they gave us holes for the bullets. And they've given us, like, nice slots for everything else. So this should be relatively easy to figure out. Shouldn't run into too many problems with this, but we'll see. And as we can see, I say this, oh God, I just put a bunch of crazy, I just put a bunch of the glue on my hand. So I just dry fit this, I just did a dry fit to make sure I understood how these pieces went together. And then when I went to glue it, I screwed it up. So. It's amazing. All right. So I think I can get us through the woods with all this. But, and you guys can see how tiny. And you got to be real careful with these. So this is a, a good common. And this is, I'm definitely going to go bust out my tweezers. I'm not going to try to do this with my finger. Which I keep doing with all this other stuff. And that's why I'm having like 17 problems per thing. Now this, at least they gave me a fighting chance. Oh, it's the other way around. That's right, because we want the bullet. That makes sense. Because it's supposed to be the bullet is hitting this thing. Ah, that one I didn't think I needed the tweezers for. Let's see if I can do it without the tweezers. The other ones I need the tweezers for. I'm not going to be able to do those without tweezers. If my, if my fingers would stop getting glued together. That's awesome. I love this. I love this effect. Damn. All right, where are my tweezers? Let's get tweezers out. All right, actually, I built him a lot faster than I thought I was going to. Yes, this is one of those. Ah. One of those where I got it. So, again, love this detail. From a building standpoint, it's a nightmare to do it. So you definitely have to use tweezers. And you definitely now have to let that set because you don't want gravity to make that dip. So t totally not a bad thing. But um, interesting. Now we'll look at the other side. But my assumption on the other side is that we'll have somewhere where we want to put that. And obviously for me, I want to put, I'm going to want to lay probably that out here and then have him behind here. So it looks like when things are hitting, it's like involving that part of the base, but. Yeah, so what I would say is your is the way I would go about doing this figure is get cable on the base the way you want. And then um and I'm going to just roughly 
use the picture as reference. Yeah, so you guys can see what I'm doing because I you you're gonna want to do that to then get that thing in the right orientation because it should line up with his hand and I don't know how to do that without having this figured out I'm sorry guys I know normally I try to keep it up in the camera but I don't know how to glue this in front of the camera because it's it's a little bit more complicated There's a lot of stuff I'm trying to line up. Shit. Okay. I'll show you guys what I did, and I already could see I gotta fix one of these explosions because I knew. So you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to place it so this looks like he's calling that force field. So I wanted it to kind of snake. So when you look at the model head on, it looks like he's like ready to fire with that up. So he's stopping the bullets because it's coming. the bullets were coming at him or going to hit him. I didn't want him to look like they were going too wide. So it is a very interesting model to lay out. I do like it, though. Again, every one of the Marvel Crisis Protocol models have been extremely impressive to me because they are always so highly detailed and so interesting. Um, and I, I have to say that about this game. They do such a good job of... They don't make stagnant models. I feel like in other games, the models are extremely stagnant. They're extremely, you know... And I think GW and... Not as much Mantic Games. Mantic Games is pretty good about not making their their models very stagnant. But um, in other cases, um, some companies, they'll make the model like... Um, they'll just make the model seem so lifeless. You know, or... You know, with superheroes, other model games with superheroes, which I don't know of many... But um, some of them, they'll just make them all like take the hero pose or like the closed arm pose. And I'm sitting there going like, why? Like, why would you limit your characters to like such a small amount of motion? Like, like, why would you do that? Um, just just doesn't make that much sense to me. All right, now for this, uh, for this model, so we had the benefit with Cable of him being a little bit of a bigger guy. For Domino, Domino in size-wise um, is not as big as those other characters, so uh, so we're we're having to do some bigger models. I'm trying to show you. So, I don't know why, but I guess... But again, see, this is really cool because of the seaming of the hair. They actually made the back of the head and the front of the head be two different pieces. Which they don't normally do that with, with um, their models, but... They seem to be doing it now. And then we're doing a triple explosion piece. 
which is also a little uncharacteristic for them. So they're, this is the first model I've seen them sort of really break it up into a lot of pieces like this. Um, normally it's not this many pieces, so... Sorry, I was just... Just trying to dry fit these pieces together. Yeah, this is a little on the unique side. They don't usually do this. They're, uh, they're pretty straightforward when it comes to gluing. I mean, maybe I could say in the starter box, Captain America might have been a little bit like this, but not too, too much like this. Oh, okay. I was supposed to not do that. Well, it doesn't matter that I did that out of sequence, but I was supposed to put all of Domino's pieces on before I did the piece that I did. Oh, geez. Now, where did her head go? Sorry, guys. I'm now looking for the missing domino head. So I apologize that the stream might have just gotten boring. I'm going to actually move this T-Rex over here. Interesting. I'm going to just trip... Praying to God it didn't do what I think it did and go inside of one of my little cubbies for my paint. Which I don't know how it would have done that if it did. Oh, there it is. Found it. And you guys can see great detail. I mean, again, the, the sculpts on these are so good. It's just she happens to be a little bit more dainty. Which is kind of funny because the character itself in the comics, she is, uh, although she is a very skilled killer, there is an aspect of her that she has a dainty quality to her. which a lot of characters will misunderstand quite a bit in the comic books which leads her to getting uh, leads them into getting a lot into a lot of trouble because obviously they insult Domino and then Domino uh, makes them you know understand that insult if you will She does not let insults go by the wayside. She is a mercenary after all. So. <laughs> you know, Domino, Domino is not of the faint of heart. Also, fun fact about Domino that she's one of the few characters in the Marvel Universe that actually knows the day she will die. Which they actually make light of in the last Deadpool movie. Because, uh... She says it's a Deadpool in passing... 
when he said, "Oh, I thought you were I thought you were dead." And she says, "Oh, not yet." <laughs> Cuz she she is actually a character that supposedly no, I mean, at least when she started out, she did. Because uh that was part of, you know, part of her probability manipulation is she knows the probability of things because she 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 it's you know so they refer to her power in the comic books as lucky but what she's actually doing is she's just moving which is why her power is more expansive she's moving the scale of probability so that what she's doing will actually uh work and do well what she wants it to do So she's affecting, she's affecting the fields of probability, um, which is causing the fantastic things that Domino does to happen. Um, so therefore, there have been storylines where she uh, can, in a way, prophesize her own uh, death, and she can also, they have, they have done storylines where she has also been able to predict, the death of characters, through her probability manipulation. So she, she's had that power, too. She's had storylines where she's been able to do that. Uh, and I think Domino's even time-traveled, if I'm not mistaken, too. This is probably the fastest I've ever built two models. I actually built these two guys in an hour, which, if I didn't have something going on tomorrow, I would definitely be on for longer. But I'm going to keep everything out because... Um, I wanted to work on like three different projects. So we're going to definitely go back to painting tomorrow. Um, and I will try not to do these like 2 a.m. videos, but you guys seem to like them. So. Okay, so this is the domino side. I'm going to wait until this sets because I can't. Her legs will probably pop off if I try to push them in there. Yeah, but she, so she's a cool character. She's had a lot of really cool storylines. do this I always am good about like knocking everything over I am such a messy model smith oh Jesus okay and there it is ah I can't hold on to her because of the way they built this damn model um Sorry, guys. Ugh. I knew it. I knew the minute I did these legs, it was gonna, it was all gonna come crashing down on me because. Ah. All right, let me get the leg back on. The problem when you do stuff like this is that when they have it going into another piece like they do here, I always, and it's weird because they don't, they're good about like, I've never really had lineup issues with them. Where like a model, I have to fight the model to get it in, or... Yeah, see, it wants to come off. That leg wants to come off. I don't know why. It's 
So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out. Oh. All right. Sorry. She's such a delicate model that yeah, now her head's coming off, right? No, all right. is off crap all right the head's not off I don't know why it seems like it's off all right I think that's the best I'm gonna get her so she's good everything seems in okay sorry I'm gonna get these grenades on the side. All right, let me just get my glue. And guys, if I could tell you how many kits I have for Marvel Crisis Protocol that we still have to put together, it's crazy. Where are these grenades now? There they are. All right, the grenades actually went on without a hitch. Okay, now, here comes the interesting part. So, see, like I said, they're so good about... Okay, uh, this is going to be insane. Because to get her on this thing, this model is, like, so teetering and delicate. It's just ridiculous. The way... because it's literally her like jumping off an explosion so it's cool once you get the model like done but man oh man does that does it have like does it have like a price of admission kind of thing man And, again, I love their bases, but I do wish, like, I sort of do wish. I know that they're they're really generous about giving you, like, all of those um, bases in the pack. But maybe if they're going to start doing a lot more of these explosion characters or, like, debris and stuff, maybe it's better if we, if we make the characters have specific bases for stuff like that. Because as much as I love it because they're just these generic build bases they would always lend themselves well to some of the explosion pieces because you want to use the damage base but it's like not sitting properly or whatever so for domino there is nothing left over there's no variation so this is a dead sprue obviously we come away with a K, uh, sort of a neck piece for cable so a neck piece that would fill in so you don't have the cape and we have a gun I might use the gun on the base to have him just like throw it down because I think that's kind of cool like he expended his uh his uh his pieces oh geez and I'll pop this bit off just so I have it all right so we'll do I'm just letting them dry we'll do like kind of a final review of them just cleaning my area up now that I actually built that model like I said pretty record time for us to build um I don't know. I'll think about the gun. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. All right. So review of cable. This is the cable model all put together. I think this is insane. I love this. You got all that action with the bullets. I mean, again, I only paid $32 for this kit. If you, I mean, if you were, if you were buying games workshop models, this model alone would be a $35 model and you get cable. 
and you get Domino. Domino model, also love it. Domino in her classic way, jumping away from an explosion, just near missing it, so she can jump and get into, into where she needs to be. You have the X-Force logo on these guys. Details like the grenades, just such a good detailed sculpt. The explosion, shrapnel's coming out of it, and it's breaking the concrete, obviously, which is great. Again, we'll take another look at, at Cable. And again, you could do Cable without the cape or with the cape, having the gun on the back. I, like I said, I may do the gun on the base, just so it's like he expect, like kind of like, you know, is shooting his weapon off and like expended it, because like Cable kind of would be that way. Um, you can see he's got the battle damage, just a nice detail. Obviously, all the detail of his gear, all those wonderful X Force logos. Um, and what I love about this game, of course, is that it also is doing comic accurate. So they go comic first. Uh, even though some of them may look like the MCU versions, they are still trying to think of the comic book forward. Um, I always say this to people the MCU versions of a lot of characters are that way because they actually started. So, A, they did, for the MCU versions, take a lot of the ultimate character designs. But people don't realize that they actually started to draw the actors and people they wanted to be in those roles. Like, that's a joke at Marvel all the time with Robert Downey Jr. They drew him in the comic books to look like Robert Downey Jr. in the ultimate storyline. Because they thought if he was ever played by someone, it would be um, him. So, it's just how it full circle. But yeah, I love this. You got the nice futuristic weapons. But yeah, this is a home run. Um, yet again, another model kit that I enjoyed. The Deadpool one, again, for 50 bucks to get Deadpool, the Chibichanga truck, and Agent Bob was amazing. Uh, sorry, we're not going to get to paint this tonight. I was going to do some painting. I promise you guys will get a painting video tomorrow. I know this was a build and review, uh, not no painting. Um, but I'll definitely do it tomorrow. I will show you guys one uh painting model that i did this is the t-rex in the you know looking to do the godzilla variant so i wanted to do it in a godzilla paint scheme because that's what the client that i'm doing this for was looking for um i wanted to show you guys i did paint it off camera and i do apologize um so i thought it came out real cool got that translucent feel for you know all of the blue work so it looks like he's charging up radioactive and then I was going to show you guys where I started with the King Kong variant. Um, and I'm actually going with some battle damage on Kong there. So you can see one eye is the normal brown. The other eye is kind of glassied. I started to do some of the chest work. Some of the fur. Um, I'm going to be toning this out. We're going to do some battle damage to it as well. Actually, that I can do right now. Because that... That I can do while I'm on stream with you guys. Let me make them have a little bit of scarring. So you can have a little bit of scarring there. Which, if you guys know, um, Kong, or the more recent Kong, he does have a lot of scarring on, like, his body. So I'm just going to give him a little bit more.
So we gave him a little bit of scars. I'll work on more scars on him when I do the rest of his, because I have to start looking at the rest of his uh, of his body, but that's accurate to just give him a little bit of battle damage, and then maybe I'll give him some more cut-ups in the back. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet. Um, and then while we're on the subject, let me just... I just wanted to... So we can have a little bit more scarring. Just make the scars a little bit more prevalent. I don't want to go too crazy. Because I don't want to make it look like he's like severely cut up. I just want to make them a little bit more so you see them when you look at them. And you can see them on here. And I like that this is a little bit more open. And what I was going to do with these... Yeah. That's good enough. And the only other thing I was going to do with him make sure I got just put a little bit more tone into this sorry guys ah alright that'll that'll sort of work <laughs> accidentally went into his mouth uh. All right, hold on one sec. Sorry, guys. I, I stupidly had my water on the other side of the room, which for folks that are painters, it's like one of the cardinal sins that you can do is not have your brushes like right where you're painting because uh, or your water right where you're painting because then what you're doing is you're creating uh, the ability for you not to clean your brushes, which you, you definitely want to do that. You don't want to not paint your brushes. Uh, not paint your brushes. You not clean your brushes. Oof, I'm in great, great shape tonight. Um. So yeah. So you don't you don't want to be in a circumstance where you have not done that. Um. Where do I want to go? Um. The only other thing I wanted to do So what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit of red. Because again, I don't want to make it look too... didn't want to do. Alright, I don't 
think there's going to be a way for me to save that. Sorry, I had to do it off camera. Yeah, so I'm going to have to... Actually, that could work. Because his eye's supposed to look like it's broken anyway. So you know what? That actually could work. Alright. So that gets like a little bit more battle damage on that side. So the, the concept of why I was doing this with the red was to... It, it was to do this thing where I was trying to... Like, sort of trace where, the, where that was. So it would sort of give the illusion... Of, like... The, the wounds were open so they were bleeding a little bit and I think I'm going to just do another like scrape right here so like some were dry and some weren't and... I'm not going to go too crazy I don't want to give him like 17 battle damage marks I just wanted to give him a few So there we go. Now I've, I've tidied those up a little bit. We've given Kong a few, which is good. But like I said, I have to do more with Kong, but... So he's got a little bit more battle damage to him. There we go. So you guys got to see me paint just a tiny bit. And I'll, like I said, we'll be focusing on Kong more. He's not really part of the Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff, but like I told you guys, you know, it all depends on how you kind of look at it, because there definitely were giant monkeys and things in the Marvel Universe that we could definitely say he was, and I'm mean, painting them and could be used as a giant thing, because they all fought creatures and weird stuff at some point. Um, but that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of review of some painting projects I was looking at, our focus on the models and reviewing them. Uh, please... Um, oh, wait. Am I? Well, I hope this is not playing things that I'm not supposed to be playing. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. But yes, so uh, if you like what you saw, you want to see more of it, if you guys want to tune in and see more of my painting videos and more of my model building videos and reviews, uh, as well as my Let's Plays and gameplay, uh, and I promise we'll at some point get to some drawing and paint, uh, like cartooning and stuff, which I have to get back on my schedule and I'm, I'm failing miserably at it. I just come home and I'm super tired and crazy. Uh, please consider following the channel. If not... Um, please like or share this video um, as well as if you are going to follow sign up for notifications so you know when we're live you can come and join and talk with us because i always love when you guys contribute and talk through the video with me uh also check out my patreon my website and the tip slash donation button please uh 
keep updating and looking at those on the patreon i will have some merch coming soon uh so please take a look for that um and then uh as always please check out the sponsors the link below for them that's undiscovered realms again where i get all my model painting and equipment from they have your tabletop needs your card game needs uh and your funko pop needs and even vintage toys they're a crazy cool place they ship anywhere in the united states i believe they might even ship internationally so they have a website for you to look at everything as well um, they have all the latest and greatest uh whether you're uh again games workshop player of 40k or age of sigmar star wars legion marvel crisis protocol um they even are starting to carry more board games i think they're going to be getting into potentially even kings of war or mantic game stuff at some point um so they got a lot coming please check them out see what's going on uh, and support them. Supporting those businesses is so important. Uh, thank you guys as always for watching. I hope that you found this awesome. Yeah, I hope you like where we got to with the uh, commissions that we were working on and others. So please, 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 please come and see us again. Take care. I'll see you very, very soon.